Hi, this is Gil Robles. Welcome to my drawing tutorial on drawing the male face from the imagination. Now, I've done uh, demonstrations before in Sketchbook Pro, which is what I'll be using. But um, more particularly, I'm going to demonstrate how to draw a head from the imagination. And these skulls are here for a reason. And you see underneath of the drawings, they show how closely I followed the structure of the skull. And right to start off with, I'm going to draw something that's not from my imagination. I, I have a, a little bust that I use sometimes just to practice with. I, I throw it under a light and so forth and get some nice shadows in there. And, and I, I just practice with this on drawing the head. And uh, what I wanted to demonstrate from here, how closely I follow that structure of the skeleton. Um, George Bridgman. Uh, the guy who wrote those classic books on drawing the human figure uh, was a teacher of Norman Rockwell, and he instructed his students to um, draw hundreds of skulls, just keep drawing skulls. At the time, Norman Rockwell said he thought it was overkill, but he realized that how how much he it helped him to become familiar with the structure of a face, so that it became a lot easier for him to to construct heads. And to, to understand what's under, when he draws what's underneath all those features that he's drawing, those eyes and nose, the, the mouth, and how, how the skull provides a structure for all of it. So what I'm going to demonstrate is just how, in fact, the, the, these, uh, the skull, you can easily find the skull right underneath this drawing because I didn't lose sight of the fact that the skull is underneath there. You know, it isn't just a, a drawing the shape of the eyes and the nose and the mouth and so forth, and, and uh, but it, it's a realization that's what's underneath all of that that helps you to, to build your drawings on top of it. And it helps you to understand, as long as you understand the, um, the structure underneath, uh, you can you can play around with it more and, and actually use your imagination to fill in the rest. So again, you know, I start off with the basic shape of the skull. That cranium is always the first thing I start off with, that big oval. And I, I build everything up from there. You know, I... I uh, get the cheekbones and the jaw lines in and so forth and it, it makes it easier for me to construct the head um, because I'm starting off with what's underneath Drawing a profile always reminds me of a friend of mine in art school. He says, all oh, profiles are very easy. It's just one eye, half a nose, half a mouth, half a chin, one one side, and one ear. Actually, it's it's uh, it's hard to make a profile, at least I think, profile interesting. you got to work hard at it. But uh, um, understanding the structure of the skull and how everything fits into it, helps it helps make it interesting and you know interesting enough uh, Leonardo da Vinci when he did a lot of his anatomical drawings he he often if you look at it studied very very skeletal men so very lean very old very skeletal and I think because he was trying to he was trying to um, un see clearly what was underneath so that he can understand how the things are on top of all the skeleton fall into place. And uh, try something with a little bit of a shadow here. And um, that that's a whole other topic uh, to, to see the way light falls over things.
and light usually I put those arrows there because light usually falls uh, two ways at least overhead and more like uh, out so when you're outdoors and you have uh, on a sunny day lighting from overhead it's coming down out because the sun is overhead it's also coming either from the left or from the right and it models your your it models the features that way it's a good idea to, to just so you don't forget where your light is coming from just to give yourself some reminders of putting out some arrows there or whatever so that you can uh, so that you can look at it and remember where where have you decided the direction of the light is coming from It's also important that you know what this is a tutorial on drawing from your imagination but I spend a lot of time drawing from from life either in front of the mirror um, going outside and sketching I, I, I do a lot of sketching in the park I do sketching on the trains and uh, I do memory drawing but most of my sketching or most of my drawing is from somebody or something in front of me so that I'm, I'm you know I'm trying to put down what I see in nature and that helps me to understand things when I do draw on my, uh, from my imagination how things go or how things should look sometimes I don't I'm not able to take my, my uh, sketch pad out I observe some things and I come back home and I, 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 I try and sketch it from memory but it's always best to um, to look at things and, and draw them right there because uh, it's great to draw from the imagination but if all you're doing is drawing from your imagination then uh, um, you're just going to continually rehash the things that you've already known the way you replenish the, those things is to go out in nature and go ahead and, and uh, make some sketches from, from things that you see sketch the people on the trains, sketch the people in the park you know, I, I sometimes I do some very, very quick sketches as people are walking by and try to note things down as quickly as I can. Here's a, a little bit of a, more of a character here. I want to try and sketch a, a Dr. Watson type of guy. Just for the fun of it. That's another thing is, you know, when you're doodling, just uh, try to imagine. Give yourself some things you want to sketch, uh, something that you've seen on TV. My instructor used to do that a lot. He talked about how uh, sometimes, you know, he he would make notes about some things that he's seen on TV. In the morning when he gets up, he'll uh, make some sketches in the sketchbook about uh, some, of, some of the things that he's seen and, and uh, just to warm himself up. Again, you know, I in all these drawings I'm going to follow the same thing and build up you know, some kind of structure underneath. And it doesn't have to be the same thing all the time, but you know what I'm doing is I'm drawing. Uh, I'm drawing based on what I know is underneath this, and there's different skull types. It doesn't have to always be the same. You know, you can vary them again. When you sketch in nature, when you sketch from life, it helps you to understand the different variations and shapes there are. And so when you, you know, you're more informed when you're drawing from your imagination. And what if you have a really extreme uh, really extreme looking character um, here again uh, I'm not trying to do a, 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 just a, any type of skull I try to figure out what his skull would look underneath and I'm here I, I gave myself a, a, a little assignment here of drawing a, a, an orc type figure an orc from Lord of the Rings or, or 
some such story, uh, some goblin, some orc, whatever. And uh, because uh, it gives me an opportunity to draw something that's a little bit more, a little bit, a lot more extreme, um, and to have fun with. And you can easily see, uh, although his, the shape of his skull is unlike a common person's shape, it's still there. It is still follows some kind of structure underneath where all his features are built on. And this holds true for when you're drawing the whole figure. Understanding, I had an instructor in, in uh, art school who actually had a skeleton out there, and, and uh, when the model wouldn't come or the, when the model was uh, late, what the art instructor do is have us draw from the skeleton. And after a while, we were drawing from the skeleton almost every morning. And it it did help me a lot. It did help me understand. So it was uh, when I did my figure drawing, I, I could understand better uh, what was underneath. You know, it's it, it's important because you think that when uh, like uh, certain certain professions, uh, when uh, paleontology, when they when they want to reconstruct a dinosaur or some such thing, they reconstruct it from what they have left from the dinosaur bones, and uh, what they put together, it's mostly guesswork, but it it uh it you know, it's basically informed by what they know about anatomy and about what the bones are able to tell them. Same thing with uh, reconstructing uh, uh, one of those early hominids. Or uh, in forensics, you know, um, there are people who reconstruct a skull, uh, a human being based on on the skull so that they can have an idea of what the person looked like. So there's a lot you can do with just the skull. And uh, you can definitely build up a character just knowing what's underneath. Now, I, of course, every time I do a tutorial or some such thing, I always remind everyone that I, of course, I can't draw this fast. I speed things up here, uh, so hopefully no one will get too bored. And there's your fork character. And lastly, I'm going to do this uh, pirate character over here, and I'm going to include more than the head, and I'm going to construct his face a little, not too different from the way I did the orc's head, um, and uh, I'm doing this knowing what's underneath. Uh, I'm not drawing the skeleton, but I'm understanding that that's the way everything is connected underneath. So these shapes um, represent skeletal, a skeletal uh, shape, or skeletal forms. He 
you know, um, I'm hoping this would be informative. I'm hoping this would help. And uh, I, I see that there, there, there are a few viewers that comment and look at the videos I posted before. Um, and you know what? If if anyone has any questions, or if anyone has any ideas of what they would like to see, or any questions about uh, um, about drawing in particular, then I can see if I I could make a a video based on that. Uh, but I would appreciate the feedback because it helps me to know uh, um, what people want to see in terms of uh, or what people are curious about. And if I have an answer, I'd, I'd love to put it up. Another thing about drawing from the imagination, you know, uh, it, it's good to look at other artists, to look at and um, find artists who, who you really like. Again, uh, one of the instructors that I had talked about finding artists who are on your wavelength, meaning artists who who like the things that you do, you know, who uh, whose drawings appeal to you and keep adding to that list. So there, there are plenty of artists uh, who work for the imagination. There are fine artists as well. I'm talking about uh, guys like Domier, who, who uh, was a French uh, um, caricaturist, but uh, made a lot of paintings and drawings uh, based on on uh, his uh, his memory, his imagination, and not with a uh, a model in front of him. Uh, there's uh, illustrators like uh, Gruger, uh, Federico Gruger, who uh, drew from his imagination and uh, had a lot of. Uh, art classes, went to, to art school and, and drew from the model and, and always was sketching in the sketchbook from life. Uh, but when he did his illustrations, he did it uh, from out of his head. And they were great illustrations. Norman, he was before Norman Rockwell. Norman Rockwell was a great fan, fan of his. Um, but uh, there are a lot of people who draw from their imagination. When I was growing up, the first artist I, I uh followed were a uh, comic book artist. I'm a big fan of guys like John Buscema and Neil Adams and, and Gene Colan and, and, and so forth. And, uh, um, and those were my biggest influences, especially from drawing from imagination. Um, Frazetta, uh, another one, and uh, a whole bunch of guys, really. But uh, a good thing is to, you know, because with uh, you don't have to draw like them, but uh, you would uh, learn from the fact that the, from the things that they've done. And that's exactly what they did. They, they were guys who had their heroes. Um, one in particular for uh, um, uh, John Basimo was Albert Dorn, uh, who's a great illustrator who, who also drew from his imagination. Uh, he, he, he did, uh, in his uh, illustrations, he was the top paying illustrator of his time. Even, uh, he even uh, made more money than Norman Rockwell. And uh, that's saying something. Uh, and he was a very, very popular illustrator. And he had a very comic book cartoon style that appealed to guys like uh, Masima. Uh, not just him, but a lot of other artists, and uh, he was a just a great illustrator. But uh, again, I I've uh, followed that advice as far as following uh, uh, finding artists who are on my wavelength, who, who do the type of work that I admire, and I, I continue to add to that list. One of the things about if you're going to draw from the imagination, what I love to do is to draw these extreme, extreme faces. These, uh, um, it's it's just a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun to draw. 
a, a pirate because a pirate doesn't have to be handsome. You can just uh, draw whatever character you, you want, and, and there it is. Unlike uh, trying to draw, um, I'm, I'm speaking mostly of illustration, where they, the hero always is some, some very handsome, appealing person, or the heroine is some very beautiful, appealing. And I, I, I like drawing people, and I like drawing characters. And uh, Pirate is just a great character. I like drawing. When I met, when I said I like drawing people, I I just like to draw, like I said, a character, not not necessarily uh, the you know uh, uh, model or, or so forth, but just uh, someone who's uh, just fun to draw and not two dimensional. You know, even the folds here on his uh, clothing, they're all informed by what's underneath. You, the more effective it is, is when you uh, give some idea that, you know what, even though I'm not drawing an elbow or anything, but there's an elbow there, there's an arm turning. And you, you, you know, you give some indication that there's, that it's just not um, fabric folding. There's a, actually a structure underneath that fabric. I don't know if, uh, if you get noticed, but I didn't speed this one up as much as I did the other drawings in here. I, I, this one's more closer to real time, although I sped it up a little bit. But it's a little bit closer to real time. It's easy to see how, you know, especially in his hands, how what's underneath, or what's, un yeah, what's underneath, uh, the, the bones and so forth, influence uh, your, the drawing of uh, the fingers and so forth. Close to being in yeah, this uh, pirate here, and I use this to 
uh, created an illustration, uh, nothing that was ever published or used. I just uh, thought it was so much fun drawing this. I just carried it on to uh, more of a completed uh, illustration. Have, doing the illustration would have uh, taken this a lot longer, so uh, I'm just gonna just so hopefully people just be satisfied with the drawing here, and then I'll show you the illustration in just a little bit. Um, but uh, I mean, again, if uh, anybody wants to see how I bring this into completion, you can always email me on. YouTube where I place my videos and, and uh, just tell me what you want to see and I'll be happy to comply. Here's the finished illustration. Uh, the pirate character. This was a lot of fun to do. And that's it on Drawing from the Imagination. I hope there was enough here to glean from. Uh, here, please visit my blog at artbusyworld.blogspot.com. Thank you.